So, so have you went through the lectures? So, how many of you have went through the lectures, like the recorded lectures? Okay. So, no, fine. So, how was that? Like, so did you? find it difficult or it's easy and somebody say okay yeah so some of you have found it easy okay it's fine So how should we start like so this is our first lecture, like first slide session for the MLS. So how should we continue like so that we'll continue for the whole like this whole elective or whole semester. We'll be doing the same thing. So we'll be having mostly uh, like two or three like, like live sessions, minimum two or maximum three for some weeks where we'll find it a bit difficult to understand. So we'll be having a extra session. Mostly we'll be having two. One will be mostly like we'll be discussing the uh, basic parts of the lectures or the if you are having any problem in the activity or practice session. And the second will be like solve with us or some doubts also will be taking in those sessions. So is that fine or should we do it something else? Like maybe we can start with today itself. Like whatever you want to say, you can just unmute and can say if you are having any opinion regarding the session. How should we do that for the whole like semester? You can unmute yourself, you can say if you want to. Anyone? So how will you get to know if you want to speak? First of all, is the timing fine for everyone? Uh, so time, uh, if it will be after the six, it will be helpful for us because... Uh, afternoon, so the problem is like, uh, you'll be having other sessions also. And so the problem is the slot have been booked already. So that's why we take the session from two to four. But I'll just ask them. So the Saturday is fine for two to four. Which one you want to shift it to the evening? Whether uh, the today's Saturday. one? Yes, yeah, Saturday will be fine, sir. Uh, because uh, and but uh, if today it can be shifted to some other in uh, after uh, even with uh, at a uh, five uh, p.m. is also okay. Uh, okay. I'll just ask regarding the Wednesday session. In Saturday, I guess it's fine, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll just ask and then let you know by next session. Okay. And sir, uh, for every uh, week, uh, the first lecture, if it uh, will be a discussion, means a doubt clearing session, means uh, if you go to your uh, slide and means as per your convenience, if you uh, touch up all the concepts, then it will be helpful for us, uh, I believe. Yeah, I can go through those topics again, but uh, with the same thing has been discussed. So it's better you can ask the topics, like whichever the topics you found it so difficult, maybe those topics we can target. Or if I'll go through again the whole, uh, whole lectures again, I don't think so that will help you a lot, I guess. Okay. Uh, that is also fine for us. Sir. Okay. So what should I do today? Like, should I explain whole thing uh, from the starting, uh, from the first lecture to the end, or should I go uh, topic by topic, whatever you will say? Uh, 
which one should i use should i start uh, from the beginning uh, i think it will be better sir if you go with the start from the beginning and cite some examples and uh, especially forward this uh, uh, regression classification and uh, uh, another tool that uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, see where is that slide. The same slide I'll be using, whatever the professor has used. So, okay, fine. Hmm. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, Bimlesh here. Uh, yeah. one, one thing, this uh, previous term live session recordings are also made available in the uh, course page. So, mm -hmm. So uh, there also, uh, uh, I mean, entire week content has been discussed. So if we we continue doing this, the same, it will be kind of repetition. So if uh, certain topics like, uh, say, training set, validation set, uh, and notations, a few questions were regarding notations, which could be difficult uh, for many of us to understand in the beginning. So those can be touched upon uh, earlier than uh, going through the entire revision if it is required. Hmm. Okay. So I'll just start with the first picture. Wherever you find it difficult, you can ask me. I'll just explain those topics. Is that fine? Or should I start directly from the uh, what you asked uh, training and validation? Yeah, for me, that was the, a little tricky thing in the sense when is validation done before training or after training? So that is where I am. Yeah. So the, the, this, this start, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll start with this. Now. So mostly the validation set, okay, many of you would have got confused with that. So validation test is generally for the model selection. Like generally we categorize, okay, I'll just write it. Uh, generally we categorize the, whatever the data set we are having. Like for example, if I want to, <clears throat> train a model and I want to build a model. Okay. And that model is like a regression technique. Okay. I'm just doing it on a linear regression, the basic, the most basic uh, algorithm that generally we use for them. ML. Okay. So what generally we do if I'm having a data set, like for example, pretty simple, like I'm having 10,000 of data sets for, for any model that I need to build. Like for example, I have to predict the rate of the house. And the rate of the house I need to predict. And for that prediction of the house rate, I'm having a features like five or four features I'm having. Okay. So generally I'm having like, for example, I need to predict the, so I'm starting from it. So this is basically train. Uh, yeah. So validation. Okay. Test. Right. So I'm having some data sets. Okay. So I'm having, if you are sharing any screen, it's not visible. Oh, it's not visible. Oh, sorry. I'm really sorry. Sir, not visible. Oh, is this visible now? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So, yeah. So generally what we do in the ML. So, so here we are starting the very basic thing. So this is the different uh, that we are talking about the train validation. In the so in the ML, generally what we do. We do so many steps to first go and build a model or can upload it in the cloud to work. Okay. So generally we have things like first step is like data pre-processing. So this is not the part of the, this has not been taught in the lecture, but just to make you understand, I'm just, uh, uh, just writing it. Generally, we do data pre-processing. We do data pre-processing simply 
the cleaning of the data. Like for example, I'm having some data, 10,000 of data sets. Okay, to build a model. Okay, so first step generally we do is data pre-processing, and then we do the feature engineering generally we do, or we do the feature selection also we do. Feature selection also we do. And then we train the model on this data set. Okay. Model training and then some hyper tuning parameter also we do. And then we upload it on the cloud to work back. Okay. So this is the basic uh, of the hierarchy or the infrastructure, like structure that generally we do. So this is the part that we are doing and we are understanding here. Okay. This is not like we have not been discussed. We have not discussed this, and uh, most probably we'll be discussing some parts in the upcoming lecture. But most of the things we'll be discussing those stuff in the next course, like ML techniques, wherever. Uh, so you'll be working on this. So here we are generally work like studying about the model training. Okay, and to for the model training. So for the model training, you can have a data set like we were having a 10k of data. Okay, and that we have to build a model so that we'll be able to predict the price of the. We have to predict the price of some house, and to predict the price of some house, we have some features like ten features. Like for example, feature one is the uh, how much distance is that house from the nearest railway station. This that can be the one feature. The second feature can be what, what is the uh, like the floor, how many number of floors that house is having. That can be other features. The third feature can be uh, what is the name of the city? Like it depends on the city also. What what is the price of the house? So there can be ten features like uh, like I am talking about like F one, F two, F three till F ten. I am having ten features to predict the price of the house. Okay, so that was the data. So in the model training, we can have three sets of things. One can be So this 10k, I can divide it in three parts. Okay, so the one part can be a known as a training data set. The other part can be a validation data set, and the third is the test data set. Okay, and uh, we have to divide it that 10k one. Like for example, I'm dividing that 10k to 80% for the training and the uh, 20% for the test. Like so, 10k out of that 10k. I'll be having how much? Two k for the test data set, and I'm having how much? Eight k for the training and validation. And out of that eight k, like for example, I'm taking twenty percent for the validation. Like so, twenty so percent of eight k, sixteen hundred of the data set, and sixty four hundred of data set I'm putting for the training data set. And this is for the validation. This is for the test. See one more thing. Uh, validation generally, generally I'm saying generally we use for the A complex model. Whenever we make a complex model, this generally we use for the complex model. Like for example, in the uh, DL, you have to use that validation because there is a in the deep learning uh, there are so many other concepts also. Like the uh, uh, you have to like the generally what happens in the DL you have some feedback system also. So to have the you are having the feedback system. And you don't because in the DL while training the model it takes a lot of time in machine learning it takes a very less time to train the model so without having the test only having the training and test also you can work and you can get a good accuracy or a good model so in the DL you have to do the validation too so that you'll be having a uh, uh, what again you can have the positive feedback to get the feedback while the validation and get and and do the required. Uh, do the required correction in the model. Okay, so that is generally used in the DL. But here we can do the training and we can just split in training or test also. But it, as it has been talked in the uh, like the lectures also, you, you have some idea about what is that validation step. So what we are doing out of that 10k, I am just taking 2k for the test, 6400 for the training, and 1600 for the validation. And I'm I'm assuming that you don't have any difference in training and test data set, right? If and anybody has that difference, like anybody doesn't have any problem in differentiating the training and test data set, right? Everybody is clear with that training and test. Uh, like training yeah. is simply yeah training. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. So I'll just explain in one minute. So training is simply 
the those data set on which we are training the model and we are able to get the model good model and the test is that generally we hide that some percent of the data set we hide it from the model so that we can check it we can check the performance of the model on the test data set and on the basis of some performance matrix like i'm having confusion matrix many other matrix generally we conclude from the test data set and on the basis of that performance matrix you can see whether our model how much accuracy i'm getting on the test data set right like for example i'm having 100 data set and all the 100 i'm using for the training also and for the testing also so i'll be getting how much percent of the accuracy can somebody say i'm just doing the training on this only and testing 100% yeah so you'll get the 100% that means you are overfitting right what you are doing you are just doing preparing the model on this 100 data set only and then you are testing on this 100 only so if somebody has made the model like for example any model can be made y equals to mx plus c the simple linear regression okay so it has been made on i am making this on the 100 data set only and i'm testing also so every time i'll be putting the x value i'll be getting the y x the same y i'll be getting okay so i'll be getting the accuracy as 100% but that is not correct if i'll put another the 100 and first data set i'll be having a unknown data set when i'll be putting it here so i'll be maybe i'll be doing the mistake right so what i'll do i'll just split that 100 into 60 to 40 and i'll train the model on 60 and i'll try to get the accuracy on this 40 so that i'll be able to know how much accuracy i'm getting on this unknown data set that was hided from the model that i is preparing okay so on the basis of this we can make like we will be able to know regarding the performance matrix okay this was the basic stuff related to training and test data set okay this clear so um uh, what sir uh, what about validation uh, means i got to training yeah, and validation test. yeah validation and thing so what i am doing uh, training and test generally you can do okay that is fine so validation what in the training itself like for example 8k was my training data set out of that i just put it 20% in the validation data set and 80% in the training data out of that 80% whatever we were having 8k so 61 400 we have kept for the training and 69 for the validation and so there are so many methods to do this validation thing like for example a very basic model is the cross validation okay in what generally we do in the cross validation in the cross validation like for example this so and for the cross validation there is a hyperparameter cv equals to 5 you can take whatever you want to take okay this is generally the hyperparameter thing that 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 many of you would be knowing about that and uh, many of you are not knowing that is fine totally fine we'll be get get to know regarding this all in the uh, upcoming lectures on the next session uh, upcoming elective also so cv equals to 5 that means what it will divide this 8k into five parts like for example uh, 1600 and this 1600 1600 and 1600 okay so what it will do it's a basic type of experiment it's doing okay the experiment means what it will be taking it will be training the model so this was our and so so this will work as a, if i am taking cv equals to 5 what it will do it will just divide this whole data set into five parts and this out of 8 8000 i was having 1600 it will put for the validation it will start working as a test for here and this four will work as a training data set so for this four it will train the model on this four and it will test on this okay again this for the cb1 again the second experiment will do and what it will do here so it will train for this remaining so it will train for this one this one this one and this one so so four it will train for 6400 of the data set it will train and it will test on this data set so this is working as a validation here 1600 of data set as well okay similarly it will do if i am taking cv equals to 5 so there are many methods for the validation also this is the basic method the cross validation we have some other methods also so i'm just taking the basic method because i am assuming many of you are not knowing about this so this is the first experiment similarly it will do for the five experiment and so because i am taking cv equals to 5 So it will do for the five experiment. It will calculate for the all the five experiment. It will calculate the accuracy for this five experiment. On the basis of this accuracy, we can have a hyperparameter tuning. Like we can, like on the basis of this, we can have a better model selection thing we can do, right? Till now, it's clear. What uh, we are doing so, it here. 
can I repeat some more? Uh, what I understood is that the training data set means uh, we have a data set, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, based on the data, we are uh, uh, making a uh, mo uh, model. And the testing data set is entirely different data set, which we like to test on that. And based on that, we'll see that whatever closeness we are getting to that result or not. But yeah. validation is part of the, it is also a testing data set, which is used uh, along with the training data set. Yeah, yeah, correct. yeah, and for the testing and for the model selection also, generally we do, it's the type of feedback that we are getting from the, uh, from this five, like CV equals to five, if I'm using this cross validation. Okay, and based on this, we can do some hyperparameter training to get a better model, and then we can test it for the in the in whatever the testing data set I'm having that we can do. Is this okay. clear? Yes. So part of, yeah, one quick question. Uh, hmm. we, yeah, go ahead. Please go ahead. I'll take it. See, validation the data is used for model selection. Yeah, this validation data is used for model selection. Now. Uh, does that mean that uh, it is required for uh, choosing the best parameters uh, for a particular uh, yeah best parameter uh, predictive model can, yeah yeah best parameter also you can say it's a type of model selection like out of this which model is good so it's a you can say it's a uh, uh, you are just so, sorry to, to interrupt by model selection means does this uh, mean uh, parameter selection why because we are already Doing this no, predictive modeling of say reg regression, say suppose house pricing, we are mm -hmm. choosing this uh, linear regression model, correct? Correct. So I'm just I was just not try, uh, able to understand whether validation data set is uh, required to choose whether it is uh, linear regression is required or some other model is required or no no not this is, one not no 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 this not or it is only for. Uh, Finding out the best parameters for that particular uh, linear regression. Uh, see, there are so many other steps also apart from parameters. Like those generally we call as hyperparameters. Okay, parameter is what A, B, C. Like for example, if this is a linear regression, what is generally say A X plus B Y plus C Z? Some sort of things. A X one plus B. Uh, like for example, this is a model. Your model is A X one plus B X two plus C X. So this is what is it? this A B is the parameter generally. Are having right, but there are some other aspects also like hyper parameters. So this validation generally help us to like have a good model on the basis of hyper. Like we are updating the hyper parameter value. So don't uh, confuse with the model. We are not changing the model. Like if you are using the linear regression, you can't go for the logistic directly with this. Uh, like with uh, the validation or uh, so this 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 is not we are doing. We are just out of this, whatever we are having, we are taking the good one where the validation is giving us a good accuracy. Uh, Correct. So taking the example of cross validation, say CV of five. So mm -hmm. over five iterations, we will, the, uh, I mean, it will train for five times. And mm -hmm. then based on the, those uh, five iterations, it will be finding out the best suited uh, parameters for the uh, model. And then after uh, f finding the best uh, uh, during the training, it will then go for a testing on test data. Correct? Correct. Thank you. Sir? Yeah. Can I order sir? Yeah. First of all, one is small doubt, like we have written y equal to x1 plus x2 plus c, c right? Mm -hmm. uh, so a and b are called coefficients or parameters because till now we have been learned that a and b are called coefficient and x1 x2 are called parameters right what a b are a, a, b, a, a b are x called and y are x and x1 and x2 are like some 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 sort of data set and variables right variables yeah, like some in, variables, case of, yeah. in case of predicting the house price it may be distance from you know uh -huh. metro station and uh, number of flows etc etc et right yeah, yeah. so yeah, a, a, a and b are called coefficients or parameters so generally in some of saying you generally say it as a parameter like but, parameter but of the, but of the or the but generally parameters are variables no, sir. generally parameters are variables right I'm, I'm so not clear, so I'm asking. 
here coefficients are very parameters i guess okay okay here coefficients are parameters huh? yes, yeah so this also get updated every time like if you choose some other model so a and b values also have, will get updated no no that's clear sir i'm asking what should be the terminology whether we should call it we call it that parameter generally we call that i can okay uh, okay sir yeah okay yeah so okay, okay. i have one question before we move on yeah 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 okay. so uh, uh, about the test set right so the test set uh, will not at all uh, affect the development of a model right the test set no so like uh, for example in the validation process if you take cv5 after five iterations we get the best whatever best parameters are there and once you've gotten that when we put the test data the test set mm -hmm. even though the performance so that accuracy is low we cannot do we cannot change the model like it's the result like whatever that's obtained yeah so after doing the validation uh, whatever we get we just try to test that on the test data uh, even if we get a less accuracy thing it's it's no, we, we can't can do have, much we can update the some hyper parameter we can update like for no, updation updation is done it. only in the validation right with within the validation so right? like test data is just for uh, uh, getting test the data is just to test the accuracy yeah, even the if we get the, yeah 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 so, so test with the test data sort of thing, yeah 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 go ahead go ahead so with the test data if we get like least accuracy for example so we cannot uh, change the model like model has been already developed in the validation process so, so you can develop can, like for example if you are getting uh some least means what you are getting 50 percent like what? for example 40 percent something like that so on the test data set you are getting on the this test data set you are getting this is a bad yeah, it's a bad model here. Totally but uh, we've we've done we've already done the procedure in the validation okay. process right we've tried our best to get the best parameters no, and all of that the best. there are so many other factors we can change the model like totally the algorithm also we can change right i'm okay. just trying so based for on the logistics that... like for example i'm just doing for the linear I can, so maybe that that data set what we are having that it's not working for the linear i can do for the random forest there are some very other other various okay algorithms. okay okay so we'll start yeah. we'll start afresh from starting again uh, if the yeah. test data is showing low accuracy yeah, we can go for random for it. There is so many okay, other okay. algorithms. Yeah, so right. we can get some good models. This is just right. a way. Like for example, I'm getting very low for the linear regression. That means this data set is not for the linear. Like it's not working for us. Yeah, yeah, uh, the it. linear. Okay. So we can go for some random for it to some good model. This linear regression okay. very basic model. Um, you'll not get good accuracy, but if you'll go for some other like random for it, mostly I have seen that random for it generally gives us a very good accuracy most of the time. All right. All right. And so what is the difference between hyperparameters and parameters in this context? So the parameter that I was saying, like for some coefficient that we were talking about, parameter is the coefficient that the model, if the model is being prepared on the basis of some data set, whatever I'm giving, like training data set, that parameter will get adjusted. The model will get made. Hyperparameter, we generally gave it. Like for example, I gave it CV equals to five. That parameter, hyperparameter, that is the hyperparameter that I'm giving. But there are many other uh, hyperparameters also that if you'll start working on some coding part, you'll get to know about that. Like for example, if I'm doing want to do the grid search and that grid search, I want to give, give some other values. So there are many hyperparameters. Like for example, KNN uh, model is there. There is a one model uh, in the clustering technique, or you can say in the unsupervised technique. I want to. Uh, so there also, it's like for example, there's a model K N or K N S. Like for example, this is a K N S model. So in this model, what generally we do, like for example, I have so many data sets, and I want to choose some value K equals to three. This this I am choosing. This, this uh, the algorithm is not choosing. So K equals to three means if I'm getting, like for example, this is the this all the data set in. Uh, no, in in like indicates apple okay and there are some other data set that includes some some other uh, uh fruit like pomegranate this uh, you know, I, i'm getting like my data set is here okay so i'm just choosing k equals to three k equals to three means what uh, i'll just calculate the nearest point from this point so this is the new point i'm i'm just choosing i want to know whether this this point belongs to apple this app like the fruit i'm having in the uh, hand like in hand like if some I load them. I load them. I have just prepared on the basis of KN. This is the new point, uh, new point, and this point I need to predict whether it's apple or pomegranate. Okay, so K equals to three is the uh, hyperparameter that I have fixed it. Okay, so K equals to three I have fixed. 
So what it will do, it will just calculate the nearest three distances from here. So this one, this two, and this three. Okay, and then on the basis of this three, it will tell you that okay, the the nearest three was what the apple, uh, or even the nearest two is two is apple and one is pomegranate. It will show you the this this this, this fruit is apple. Okay, and if I I just kept k k is equal to ten. So this is a, this also I'm I'm just changing the hyperparameter and k equals to ten. If I'll put it like for example, and three was the the nearest three distance was the apple, but the like the seven nearest uh, belongs to the pomegranate, and then it will see it will say you this this fruit belongs to the pomegranate. But but uh, whenever you will just increase the this is the model in uh, k nearest k nearest whenever you will start increasing the k equals to like more than ten and on, it will start behaving like a bad uh, model. Okay, so hyperparameter is generally we fix it, like we give it from the external part. Parameter it will get adjust from itself, like on the basis of data set, whatever we are just training on the data set. On the basis of training data set, the parameter will get adjust by itself. Hyperparameter we are giving. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So is it like hyperparameter is kind of a part of a library which we'll be using, and Those particular uh, yeah, it's a part we, of we can yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's a part of library only. We'll be fixing. We'll be giving. Like whenever you code, you'll just have to give the k equals to this value comma. And there are many other hyperparameters in a in a one algorithm. Okay, that you need to fix it from yourself. Otherwise, this hype the, the the whatever the there is a proper value also. Like for example, every time like you didn't fix the value of k. Like for the k nearest. You are just putting the algorithm. You, you didn't have fixed the value of k, so it will take some default uh, default value, right? That has been fixed by the whoever has prepared this algorithm, right? Like for example, k equals to four is taking every time, or k equals to five is taking every time. So that you need to fix it. Like you want to change it to the k equals to four, so you just have to write it in the code one word k equals to that you need to change it, and it will start working as whatever you are putting from the external. Part. Otherwise, it will take as a default value whatever has been fixed already. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Is learning rate a uh, hyperparameter in linear regression? Uh, learning. Uh, learning. Learning rate. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Learning rate is also one hyperparameter. Okay. 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 So. Yeah. So this is fine. Uh, any other topic that you? Yeah. yeah uh, still, uh, brief about the unsupervised learning, especially density estimation, sir. So the density down. estimation, yeah. Sorry. Okay, density estimation. Yeah. So density estimation is simply, I'll just tell you in a very like easy way. This is the unsupervised learning. Okay, unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning means what? You don't have the label. Okay, so whatever the data set you are having, you don't have the label of that. Label means the output value. Okay. So what I was trying to say, I just forgot. Okay. What was the example? Yeah. So for example, I'm having some data set. I'm having a data set like this is the MRI data set. MRI data set I'm having for some hundred people. Hundred people, uh, I just took it from some hospital, and this MRI belongs to some Alzheimer patient. Alzheimer patient. This is a disorder uh, of a person like if it starts, uh, I just forgetting the things from it. So this is a if somebody has seen one Bollywood movie, I guess Black or what was the name? So. That Amitabh Bachchan was having this, not Amitabh Bachchan. Some character was having this disease. So I'm having the uh, MRI of some person, a hundred person. So it's hundred person. So I'm having the data set, and from this MRI data set, I'll just do the uh, feature extraction from that MRI, and from the feature extraction, I can have some features. Like for example, I just took ten features. Like uh, from that MRI, I just took ten or fifteen features, and on Basis of that, uh, I want to do some 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 sort of data analysis. I just want to do. So I'm having only hundred 
uh, or for example, thousand MRI and heart. Thousand MRI and heart. But thousand is a very small number, right? Like if you have to uh, do some data analysis, like it's a, and you need to say regarding the next person. If I'm I'm getting the some next person, you want to say something about the patient also. Uh, whether it's a uh, Alzheimer in which category generally falls. Like Alzheimer generally a two or three category I say. Uh, so which category generally falls in? And on the basis of some features, like for example, he can. Uh, from that features means from the MRI, you can take some uh, some you can do some mapping in the MRI. You can have some protein value or the gray matter value from the, those. Those can work as a feature for us. Okay, and I'm having only thousand data, so thousand MRI only I'm having, and that but that thousand is not going to help you because thousand is a very small number. You should be having at least ten k of the data set to have some analysis, right? So what what you can do you the first basic simple method is called you can just go and to some hospital and you can uh, ask for that MRI. That that's the one thing to have a more data set. Uh, but but that that it, it depends on the hospital or it depends on the person also like because very very less person who is having this this disease. So what else you can do like I'm having hundred only you want to make it five k or ten k of data set. Okay, so this thousand you would have read in the stats also. This thousand, if if you just have the you do you have already done the uh, feature extraction from those thousand of data sets. This thousand from this thousand data sets, you can uh, you'll be having some mean and some variance of each of the features, right? For each of the features, you'll be having some mean or some variance. Okay, and for example, this features like for example this feature one. I just did the mean, calculated the mean and variance, and we have seen that you you can have the you can get the estimation of the parent distribution. Parent distribution, like for example, you just plotted the histogram. Okay, if if you have plotted the histogram, just for example, you got this this type of histogram. You got some histogram. Okay, so this started representing what. This is a normal distribution. Can be a perfect normal, perfect normal, but okay, it's fine. If this is not a perfect normal, also, so you'll be having. So you you, you from the feature one, for the each of the features, you'll be having some histogram, and based on those histogram, you can have some parent distribution from parent distribution means the distribution from where these values are coming. So from that how can This from the thousand data set, you can plot the estimated distribution, right? So the parent distribution. Are you getting my point? So this from this histogram, you can have the parent distribution. And from that parent, if one chance if you are having the parent distribution, now you can take out like ten k or fifty k of the data set from here, right? Are you getting my point? Ah, uh, no, sir. So, I'll, I'll just start it from the beginning. So I'm having ten features. Like for, I, I just took the MRI of some person, hundred person or thousand person. From the thousand person, I just extracted the features. So I'm having now what? I'm having ten features. Ten features can features can be anything of of that person. I just extracted from the MRI. Like for example, one feature is the gray matter volume. If somebody is from the biology, maybe he will be able to understand that point. Uh, but I'm having just for example ten features F1 to F10. That each of the features will be having thousand value, right? This is a data set, simple data set. I'm having ten value. Each data set is having ten value, like for example, F1 to F10. And similarly, I'm having thousand was having thousand of MRI, so I'm having thousand of the data set. Each data set is having features, ten features. Each features is having hundred of the some values would be there, right? Clear? Till now it's clear. Yes. Yeah. So. So for this features F1, I'm having thousand value. From this thousand value, you can have some histogram you can plot, or you can get some histogram, right? Yes. It's a mathematical value only. From the MRI, I just took some features, and that I just normalized some something I did in the data pre-processing stuff, and I just got some value like 1.2. This, for example, is a gray matter volume. Okay, and this I am getting some value 1.2. One point five. So some values I'm getting, I just plotted a histogram. 
from that histogram i can have some to, to know that the parent distinction you have already did some estimation right in the sad also so from this histogram you can have the you already have the mean variance everything you are having you can have the plot of the parent distribution parent distribution means from where each of the values are coming and once you get the this distribution you can take out whatever the numbers of features you want to like get it from there so you already have this features for each of the other value you can get the value like the features well like from here from 10 like from the 1000 you can make this as a 10000 also so this is the, this is the plot of one particular feature right ha uh, this is a plot of one particular feature similarly you can do for all the features right like basically we are extrapolating this value right ha uh, yeah yeah this is what we are doing we are just extrapolating the value from that 10k we are making 1000 or 50k so that now i am having that much number of data so that i can analyze those data like this is what we are doing so like for example i am having for the training data set i am having very less data like 10k only i need have so i am not getting that good uh, model so i will just extrapolate those data set to the 50k and then i'll i'll try to do the training for those data set but so sir uh, the uh, extrapolated hmm. data will be uh, somewhat similar with my 10k data right it will be based on that data Uh, if you are extrapolating so much, it will start coming the same data set again and again. But if you are making like from five k to ten k, it will help you in uh, modeling the data set. But if you are doing, uh, if you are just, if you are having only ten data set and from that ten, because from that ten you will be not getting the exact uh, parent distribution, right? First thing is you have to get the parent distribution. Parent distribution from where these values are coming. if you are able to predict those parent distribution then you will start getting the good values are okay. you getting my point right so the, if you are able to predict the normal distribution the exact normal distribution so you will be getting for each of the value you will be able to extract the features right but if you are having only 5 or 10 features so this was the histogram you were having and from this histogram this you have just plotted a normal distribution from those 5 or 6 data that you were having so this is not the good like estimated dis, uh, distribution right and so if we are taking out from this distribution we are taking out some 10k of data this is not a good data this part simply is a density estimation so in the lectures also he just taking some basic examples like for example one upon some basic example it is so if you will just watch the lecture again i i am sure you will be able to grasp or what you can do if, if now also if you are not able to grasp you can go and watch the uh, there's a lecture in the end what generally you call that tutorial okay so the tutorial also you can watch that is of the 10 minutes or 15 minutes that is also good okay or, okay. or should i explain it again uh so uh, this much is okay uh, which you explain that uh, uh, this parent distribution and from that we are extrapolating the data hmm that, that i understood that uh, this portion Okay. Yeah. So can I ask a follow up question to this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when we extrapolate the data, how good would be the final data set? Or is there any uh, you know upper limit as to you can extrapolate only up to twenty percentage of your existing data set? Because mostly we'll be assigning mean values. I'm not very sure about what kind of values you extrapolate it with, but uh, would it, would the data set lose its uh, um, you know will it create a good model at the end of the day if we do that uh, yeah so like for example i i this mri whatever i am thing uh, saying i just did one project and that project i did it in the one government hospital uh, last year when i was in the final year uh, so there i used the same thing i just extra plotted plotted the data that i was having i was having only less like mri of some Thousand or some nine hundred people only. I just made it to like three k or four k, and then used the data set as having a good model. I was able to prepare. But if I just make it a very large, like one lakh or one million of data set, then you start giving the same. What you can say the same type of data set again and again, and then you'll not be able to get a good model. But if you are able to just do it twice or thrice, I think it will help. 
uh, but there is no like point of like how much we can do uh, it all depends on the uh, what you can say the practice or like uh, the the data set also it, it depends so there is no like in whole of the ml uh, there is no any restriction on any thing i guess you have to work on the data set and then only you'll be able to get to know the, uh, how much is working and how much is not working it's all like depends on the person who is analyzing the data so there is no okay. cut off uh, mark for this so so when you said that uh, if we are extra extrapolating too much say in the uh, range of say lakhs uh, or even beyond so that basically uh, that could lead to uh, same re record uh, repeating yeah, several record. times so yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so yeah so effectively that uh, if we kind of uh, uh, again scheme out it will lead to say some 4k or 5k only yeah yeah if you just start taking the correlation because many a times you do in the data pre processing you just want to reduce the features also you want to reduce some data set also if you are having the same data set that will not help you in giving you the good model okay so in the data pre processing you do such things also you you calculate the covariance of different data set or different features also even you do if you are having the like for example uh, if you are predicting some uh, something like for example uh, weight of a person okay and weight will uh, depends will not depends on the hair length right not hair color it will not depends on the hair color of any person right so you want okay that that example is very like not good i guess for this yes is yeah, understood so suppose uh, in a, da a data set a particular feature is kind of a uh, uh, say suppose there is a feature f and uh, there is another feature which is basically a multiple of f that kind mm. of thing yeah, so that yeah, can be like, that will not help you in, in, in like making a that will not help you that that will not help the model to uh, give like update it itself yeah, right? it the same, same information for the uh, yeah that is a irrelevant model irrelevant features or you can say the data set also if you are having it's irrelevant only okay. so and, uh, yeah uh, in unsupervised learning uh, especially we uh, arrive uh, based on the data only right we don't predict any model just like in supervised model uh, in regression or classification yeah unsupervised is simply like you have been given a different uh, fruits and you have to predict the which this one like on the like you have you are a robot for example you have not seen any fruits earlier okay on the basis of only on only you have been given a lot of fruits okay and you have to categorize uh, categorize means you have to just put it one sort of thing at one place right so on the basis of data that you can do right if, if this is an apple will, on the basis of shape you can do right this this yes. simple un, unsupervised one you don't have the label like if you are having the label like for example this is the data that you have been given this is the fruit you have been given i have been told this is a apple it will look like this <coughs> and this is a pomegranate it look like this then you'll the label you already have so you can directly say but if you don't have the label then on the basis of only the data set what are the fruits you are having you'll just categorize okay this is the one bunch of uh, fruit that looks like this red color or whatever the shape you can say this is the other bunch of the fruit you, it look like some other thing from the first one so this is the unsupervised you don't have the label okay like for example you have to predict them and, like and then then we can name them right what this bunch of fruits is called right name uh, yeah name uh, is a different thing but you can categorize at least okay this is the one first one one but category. again but in that case again labeling is coming into picture now if we are giving a name to a particular group so like as you are saying that you know the whole data set has been divided into no, no, four see, groups right see. okay so see unsupervised you have been given the fruit and you have not given the label okay so what you'll do you have not you're not knowing about the name of the fruit So the label is not given. So what you will do? So you on the basis of the shape, size, whatever is in there, you'll just categorize. Okay, this is the first category. This is the second category. Third, you are not no, naming it, right? Simply categorize it. So this is not a label you are not getting. So 
So label simply means you don't have the label from the starting. Okay, you just have the date, one, one all the data set, but you don't. You've been not given the day, label. So what is this belongs to? So on the basis of only uh, models. So what do we mean by label in the sense? Uh, label means suppose, the final. Suppose value, like we have. Data. Suppose hmm. we have this housing price data. So oh. and suppose there are thirty features and basis which we are uh, predicting the price. So what the is price, what does label mean over here? The price has been not given. Only the features has been given. Okay, the price of this is, uh, belongs to the the room, the the floor, the the distance from the station, the city. So, so, but so the number, price has so, not been given. So, so suppose area of the flat or number mm -hmm. of rooms or distance from all these are labels, correct? No, no, this is not label. Label uh, is the final price. Label. The final price. Like prices. for example, F two, F two, F three. So three features are there on which the price of the house depends. Okay, but the price is not been given. You don't have the price of anything. Only this value you are having. Are you? So no, price we are having. If if we are no, training the model. No, no, for the new for the new data set we don't have price, na. So that is the reason. What even for the older data set also Correct. we don't have. Correct. So the can we say sir that the output so variable prices, is no. level? Otherwise, how will we train the model? Okay, this is what I am saying. This is unsupervised. So whatever you are doing is just supervised, where you are already having everything. I am just talking about the unsupervised, where the price. So sir, how there. how will the validation set, training set, and all these will fit in in this case? Okay. So okay. <laughs> So the basic difference, I'll just start from the beginning. The supervised and non-supervised. In supervised, in housing price data, we have said suppose thirty features and price is there. So hmm. price is the label, or all these thirty features the are also labels. Price is the labels. label. Price is the label. Label means the output or the whatever you want to predict. So the price you want to predict. So this is the label, or it's a. Or for this is a one example that prediction of the price of house. So this what you want to predict the predict the price. So the price is the label. So whatever you are having the data set, okay, features one, a features two. The so price you already have, right? Like if you want to predict the rate of the price price of some houses, you already have the price. You have the features. What are the features I'm having? Features three features I was having. The three features I was having, I was having the price also. So this, so this can you work? So you will work. So you'll be using some some supervised learning here, some supervised model to train this. Okay. So all these uh, different features will be like uh, uh, variable input label. variables the to the model. The label is only price or all the other features as well. No, no, only the price is the label. Label means the output is just the way to so basically, uh, what you can say okay. communicate or uh, or you can say the state. Uh, output the variable, ah, uh, why? Basically, yeah. why? Yeah, why is the output variable? This is the final price. This is the final. This is output. That's it. If this is available, so, so all these features are input variables in case of supervised model and price. Or any other thing which has to be predicted becomes the output variable in case of supervised learning. If you are having a data set with the label, then you will use supervised learning. That's it. So you don't have to go through that features and all. If you are having label for the data set, label. So this is the one example I am saying. The second example can be you want to predict the you are getting some mail, okay? And mail you want to predict whether it's a spam or not spam, okay? And, and whatever the data set you are having. You already have been given. Okay, if you are getting this sort of data set, so this is indicating spam. Spam you can indicate this in the mathematical form one or not spam as minus one or zero. Okay, and if you are having this label already for the data set, then you will say this is a supervised. You can use some supervised algorithm to do some analysis on this. Okay, because you already have the label. Label means you already whatever the data set you are having for the earlier data set. You already have the final value on which you'll make the you'll use the supervise some algorithm to make to train the model on this. Okay. So this is classification, huh? This is a classification problem. This is a classification problem, and if you have to predict some prices that comes in some mathematical numerical value, 
that generally you call it as a regression problem uh, okay sir just to summarize sir can we say that yeah, go ahead uh, your voice is supervised model only we have these two in case of supervised models ha huh? go ahead hello am I, yeah, do we have only these two do we have only these two tools one is prediction and the other one is classification prediction classification acha regression and classification you are asking yes sir means uh, prediction is regression oh. so the, yeah only these two tools are there ha huh, in supervised learning correct okay but like for example see i'll the generally the algorithm generally can be classified as supervised or unsupervised like there are other also but that you don't have to read it now okay so mostly you have to read the supervised and unsupervised only and in the supervised you should be having if you are using the supervised you should be having the label for those data set and for the unsupervised if you are not have the label you can use the unsupervised learning there okay unsupervised is like the, the very basic you have been taught here there are some other also like for example how does that netflix work or the netflix or anything like how does that netflix give you if you watch one movie how does that give you the another movie okay the people who have seen this movie also seen this this like like film one if somebody has seen it will give you some recommendation right generally if two films okay how does that work that also works on unsupervised learning because some there are some many things that is happening in the netflix also like this this generally works in the recommendation model that 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 generally how does that work it generally calculate the covariance matrix and many other things generally it calculate and it will give you like for example the gana.com also it generally gives you the song it, it resembles the person like for example if somebody has seen the film f1 or have heard the some song some song one okay and if after this if somebody has heard song two Okay, so it will give you the the recommendation of that song two one, or YouTube also gives the recommendation on this that this basis also. So this is the other other method. The other method you'll be uh, learning in clustering and all in the final week. Uh, some basic model you'll be learning on that. So don't worry about that. So till now, is that clear? Like, does anybody has problem in differentiating between supervised, unsupervised linear uh, regression or classification? Uh, this sort of thing anybody is having any issue in those things and uh, sir regression yeah. is basically a continuous type right uh, and uh, in case of classification it will be uh, either yes or no means we are making mm -hmm. it uh, within 2 kilometers uh, the price of the house will be higher and yeah. if it so is zero if it else, must... yeah generally when you are using if else condition if else condition generally give you the classification only okay okay yeah so whenever if else means what even you can use this if else everywhere right if you are having the okay. mail also like whether it's spam or not then in those cases you use the if and else condition only if if this happens this belongs to a spam if else it will belongs to not spam sir yeah sir i am confused in the unsupervised learning part sir that how we can use this density estimation and how we can use the sir so dimension reduction sir. so how see unsupervised is what is what you don't have the label is not present okay so the label is not present in the dimensional reduction what we are doing dimensional reduction is what so we are having some encoder and then we have some decoder so why we are using this encoder and decoder like for example i'm having a data set that consists of 1 million of features and that 1 million i'm having 10 1 millions of features and 10 millions of that 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 set of data set i'm having okay so if i'm having 1 million of data set okay One million of like for example, PC uh, 
that is the method of the dimensional reduction also the pc that maybe you'll uh, read in week six or seven so in that word generally that is also unsupervised but that's simply same as this one dimension that that is a dimensional reduction they think only svd if you'd have read uh, about the svd or the pc also pc is a dimensional reduction technique in that what we are doing generally if i'm having some 10k of features or some bigger number of features i just want to reduce that okay and if i am able to reduce that if i am able to reduce that 10k features to some uh, some 10 features out from 10k to directly 10 without losing much of the information okay are you able to get that 10k features i am just reducing to 10 10 features with some encoder okay like for example i am just giving you one example maybe that will help you to understand so i was just talking about the uh, one thing if i have uh, this is a pretty simple one so here what i am doing 10k to 10 directly 10 without losing without losing much information at uh, that that generally we will be able to do that also without using much information we'll be able to convert that 10k to 10 also that feature so there's a one method generally we did it as pca method pc is a dimensional reduction technique only that is unsupervised only so what generally we do here like for example i'm talking i'm having only i'll just convert the two features to one feature similarly we do for the 10k to 10 also so i'm having two features like for example f1 and f2 i'm having and i'm predicting the uh, height of a person height of a person i'm predicting the so feature one is what weight of a person this is the weight of a person and the feature two is the blackness of the hair how black is the how black the hair is is the second feature so if i'm having some two features so uh, you'll be agreeing with me that the second feature is not will not help you to predict the height of a person will that help the blackness how black is the hair of that person will that help no no right so we can reduce this feature so we can directly go from two to one right two to one features we can directly go okay is it fine similarly generally we do so this is the basic this is not the exact pca but pca generally works on the, the this concept only so um, this is a this was a very basic one so two we have simply converted from two to one right two dimensional to one directional we are, we are able to convert and we have not lost much of the information we have not even lost any information in this case right if i'm able to if i'm modeling the if i'm training the model on the basis of f1 and f2 or the second model i'm doing i'm just training on the basis of f1 both will give you almost the same accuracy because the f2 was not helping you anyway so encoder in the encode dimensional reduction here also what we are doing we are just converting from 10k to 10 without losing much of the information okay and again with the decoder we can just convert that to from 10 to 10k and after that if you are able to get the y value y means the final value final value you are able to convert uh, if, if after uh, converting that after with the help of some decoder so that encoder and decoder how will that be how you will be able to get the encoder and decoder that that generally will be able to make with the help of the data set so you don't have to make that the algorithm will work for you you don't have to make the encoder or decoder the algorithm will work for you encoder you'll be able to get and decoder also will be able to get and then from the decoder you just have to get the y value and the y value you have to get in such a way like the decoder whatever the decoder you are able to get in such a way such that your uh, your loss function or the loss value should be minimized like whatever you're getting like for here you are getting y dash you are getting and the final y value you already have the label uh, or you, from the algorithm you are able to calculate and the loss value should be minimum okay Okay, this 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 was too complex. Sir, I'll, I'll just try to uh, yeah. Uh, the output of the decoder is actually the x value, no? Not the y. Uh, so x x only, not the y. Yes. Yeah, correct. Because the, uh, you don't have the label for this. Yes. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is, so 
simply in the dimensional reduction so from here we have converted from two dimensional to one dimensional so similarly you can do for the larger also you just have to get the encoder and good encoder and decoder and that is good and good decoder uh, encoder and decoder that will be able to get like for example uh, in the tutorial also uh, that uh, uh, the tutorial if you have gone through the tutorial so he has just got he, he was able to convert that 30 he was having the 30 features and he just want to convert that into three features okay so that it will be helpful for him to uh, it will be helpful for the training that uh, the feed like a model making model also from like if you are having some 30 features and if you are uh, preparing some model on the basis of that 30 features it will take you a lot of time also to uh, train the model and if you are uh, converting that 30 features to three features and even with the three features, if you are able to train the model and get the accuracy almost same as the first one, it's better to do with the second one, right? Because you are not losing much of the information. But so this this is not that complex. If you just go and watch the tutorial once more, I don't think it is too complex. And in this. Mostly, like because many of you are not knowing about many of the concepts, like the uh, what are the other techniques in the unsupervised. So, if you read about the unsupervised, uh, you will get to know this. This is not that complex. The only this dimensional reduction and the, uh, the the density estimation doesn't generally come under this. There are so many other things that generally come under unsupervised things. These are the big complex things that has been taught here. But this this uh, the dimensional reduction that because it has been taught here because. In the later weeks, you'll be able to know regarding the dimensional reduction technique that you'll be reading. Like the PCA model and the SPD model is the dimensional reduction technique that you'll be reading in this course. Okay, that's why uh, maybe the dimensional reduction has been taught. But in unsupervised learning, there are many things that is very useful, like the, like the clustering or the recommendation model. That that the, those aspects are the very important in the unsupervised learning that you'll be reading in the later electives and all. Okay, but. Yeah, so it's not that complex. Uh, you'll be able to get size. Uh, sir? Yeah. Like, sorry, encoder means from 30 features, we are coming to three features, or 10,000 features, we are coming to 10 features, right? Huh. And deco decoder means going back to the original number of features, right? Yeah. So, in so, that case, you'll be able so to. How, how, how decoders yeah. work like uh, that? I'm not able to visualize, like, how decoder, how, you know, with the help of function. Like when we are encoding it, so say for example, you are merging a couple of features, right? As you said that, uh, say for example, two things are given, so we, we will find out the rate. So like this, with the help of two features, I came out at one feature rate, right? Mm -hmm. So how to going back from you know, three features to 30 features or 10 features to 10,000 features? Okay. Then we will be studying in detail in subsequent weeks or? Uh, in the sixth or seventh week, you'll be going through this. Uh, okay, then, in okay, no problem. So then we can discuss at that point. Here okay. it has been just talked in a very basic way. If you're okay. having, for example, this is the this is the encoder I'm taking, this is the decoder also I'm taking. And from this, this encoder to I'm using this encoder and I'm using this decoder, I'll be able to get. Uh, so here you just have to know the basic stuff about the dimensional reduction. Yes, sir, I have, Upcoming gone, through the, lectures, I have yeah. gone through the slides, sir. The uh, professor has taken the help of a matrix multiplication, right? So yeah. it, was not, it was not in that depth. So I'm asking. So you're saying that in subsequent weeks, this will be dealt in much detail, right? Yeah. So the two weeks are mostly on the dimensional reduction only. Okay. Okay. No problem, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So, so yeah, the Anything else? Like all the other aspects are clear, right? So anything else? Any problem? Any of the concepts? So you are having only four or five concepts here. Uh, you have to know regarding that what is data generally. The data everybody would be aware of that. What is supervised learning? What is unsupervised? In the supervised, you are having regression and classification model problem. And in the unsupervised, you generally are reading the dimensional reduction and the density estimation. Mostly you should focus on the supervised. So generally, that, that will help you. Uh, that generally, the, the whole industry generally works on the supervised mostly. 
Yeah, super. Also, super work. But whenever, whatever I have worked till now, I worked on this super work till now. Is there any other point is, that you want to? Is supervised regression analysis will be the major tool, na? Huh? Regression. Regression also, yeah. Classification also. Is ah, regression and classification, these two will be major one, na? Huh? Yeah, yeah. And in, in so regression is for prediction. So my question is that for prediction, regression will be the major tool. Yeah. Okay. there are many models like you know, many predictive model many probabilistic model also like logarithm algorithm like that there are some other model that that you don't have to read it now i guess if somebody is doing fine but you have to read it in the other all the algorithm will be dropped i guess in the next term no i don't know <laughs> yeah so, yeah so um, sir yeah uh can we do validation and training on the same data set validation on training yeah 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 okay okay thank you same data set means like if you are doing the validation like for example i talked about the cross validation okay so uh -huh. out of the training model itself i was just taking some of the validation like uh, for from like for example i was having 10000 of the data set out of that 10000 i was having i just took 8000 for the uh, training and 2000 for the uh, testing And out no, of that eight no. thousand, I was just putting sixteen hundred for every time. Sixteen hundred I was putting for the validation, and then the other sixty four hundred for the uh, training. So I, I, okay, I can't okay. take same thing um, for both. Like I can't take. I'm just training on. The, so if I'm training, uh, I'm training and validation and doing the validation on the same data set. It will it will not help you anyway. Okay. Okay. So, so we have. To, to, yeah, you have to. But, validation and training later. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, this uh, density estimation. I think we were talking about de density estimation, and yeah. then we digress to all these questions. So that we were talking about like you know, ten uh, features are there, and we are having only hundred data per feature, and we want to extrapolate it, right? So uh, you said that we draw, uh, we draw the you know uh, histogram, and then we come out with the probability density function, and then we generate more data. So what next after that one? Because density estimation seems to be a little bit tough in first week. That is not clear to most of us. So what next after that? What is uh, like? Uh, I think after that, that loss function comes in also. If you can elaborate on that, so that will be a great help. What like like if you are having so it was generally you were no, just, up to the, up to this point what you thought that is clear that ten features are there but we are having only hundred data point per feature so we want mm -hmm. to extrapolate it so you said that we'll draw a histogram right and we'll find out the probability right. density function and then we'll we'll estimate more data right yeah yeah I think from there we digress to all these discussions so what next after that what we are supposed to do ultimately what we do and then what is loss function of density estimation if you can density estimation is uh, yeah so in that you were just wanting to get some more number of data set to analyze the data so the density estimation generally helps you in that in that density is a unsupervised technique in that will be so there are some other, there are some uh, different models that will help you to like. To increase the number of more like number of data sets also, there is not just you know there is not just uh, only one method. In that method also, there are some two three methods that will help you to increase the number from that one k to the ten k. Okay, and that from there, if you are having a large set of data set, then whatever you want to work on that data set, you can work on that. Let's see. For example, you are just density. You have done the density estimation. You have done the density estimation. Like for example, three model you took out. Like three model you got, and from that model you can just calculate the loss function and see which which model is good for you. Like in the lectures also, he just took the basic, very simple, simple. He just estimated uh, the he has just estimated some very basic, uh, um, some very basic. What you can say the distribution, and from that distribution, he took out the point and calculated the probability value, uh, not the probability value, uh, the the error or the loss, and then from that loss function, he just like told which out of this three or four, which one is the. So he he is taking professor is taking some sine function, you know, sine of. So can you explain that part a little bit? Okay. Sine function it is. S i g n sine. S i g
here x y which function you are saying we just took see this is the estimation only just took the very uniform distribution from 3 to 5 and some four model it took and then calculated the loss function uh, this is a different thing the gaussian mixer model is a different thing gaussian mixer model is generally the 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 collectiveness or the 3 4 if you are having normal distribution mix 3 4 mixed normal distribution uh, then you generally say that as a one version this this also you read in the uh, next not next but the upcoming week the gaussian mixer model but this is the basic things he took like for example he took the uniform distribution from 3 to 10 0 from 10 he took 1 to 5 he took 3 to 5 he took he just took the four distribution and from that four distribution he just calculated the loss function and seen which model is good which model is a good estimation of whatever the data set you were having so this is the data set you were having only the four data set you were having and from that four data set he just took four density estimated he just took the four function or the distribution he took from that distribution he just took out the four uh, whatever the data set he just took out and from those he calculated the loss function and from that loss function he was able to say which is the good estimated distribution okay or the model he should be taking so four model he took and from that four model which is the good like p3 is a good one having the list uh, i guess uh, loss function loss value So, any more issues from any of the lectures? Is this clear? Like uh, Ganga Prasad, is this clear? Are you able to hear me or not? You are audible, yes, sir. sir. You are audible. Yeah. So, yeah, so they are asking for shine function. Shine function. Yes. Where is that? It's in this classification, I think. Okay, classification. Okay, that is not time. Okay, this function you're saying. This, this generally indicates whether it's a one or yes. zero. Or one or minus whatever you want to take. This is what you are saying, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this so if the class is if this is expression is positive, then it will be be plus one, or if it is expression becomes negative, it will be minus one. Uh, minus and one for minus zero and for zero, he has taken uh, plus one. Uh -huh. Okay. For zero, he took plus one, and for the negative, he took. So is, is that uh, if, if that, like, like for example, if, if for example, it's a model of that generally classify uh, your mail or the messages to spam or not spam. If this come as a spam, it will be a minus one. If this not a spam, it's a normal message. Then the plus one, that's it. So, and this is what omega transpose x plus b is a model. On that model, what are the value, what are the data that you are having, that data that will go and will, uh, the, the data set will go like for example x is the data set here and w transpose is the model that you have created w transpose x plus b is the model that you have created from those whatever the data set you are having okay and this will work as a sign of that like if, if you are getting some positive value whatever the if and else condition whatever you have kept like for example w transpose x plus b is coming to be positive then we will say okay this is the um, normal matches if w transpose x plus b is coming as a negative value then we will say okay this is a spam okay that depends on what you have defined. Sir, uh, I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, so if let's say the output has more than two values, like the output of the model has more than two values, then those expressions won't hold huh, in that case. Okay. So you are saying W transpose X. So how come that if you're putting uh, X some... No, no. Uh, this F, the output, RD2, mm -hmm. Uh, this bracket plus one and minus one. We have only two values, right? So yeah. if there are more than two values, then yeah, there can be more than two values. Yeah, correct. So if you are having so this is the base, this is the simplest classification model. Simplest classification means you are just categorizing into two things. 
okay yeah, right two right. things is either it can be a spam or not spam but there can be some there can be uh, some thing like there can be some uh, data set where the models where the label will be apple fruit and uh, apple pomegranate and banana okay there can right. be right so yes, in those yes. cases there are some other like for example in the logistic generally not so in, logistic. in that case it will be some other function not sign function because sign yes. function will either give plus one or minus one Right, right. Uh, that's what I wanted to ask. So fine, like yeah, yeah. So so sign function is a simple representation here. Like for example, I I was just giving you three uh, the problem where you you can represent in so this here he has just represented in plus one or minus one. Whatever you want to represent, you can represent in those things also. Like for example, if you want to represent in zero one, you can do that also. Like for example, it was if I'm having three fruits or three classification model, like for, uh, that apple, banana, and pomegranate. So you can you can represent apple as one and pomegranate as two and banana as three. This this just totally depends on you. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. So the W transpose X plus B equation, right? Is that uh, a, like a generic equation whose derivation and all will come up, or it is just for an example sake put up just here? Just for example, this is a model that we got. W transpose X plus B is a model we got. Okay. Every time you get some different, like whatever the, it depends on the algorithm you are using. Okay. If you are using some different, like logistic, you'll get a different sort of model. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like for example, if you have to calculate, uh, like this is the function you have been given, f x and g x, the function, and the function has already been written as sine of two minus x one. So this x one, if you are having the x one, you'll be able to get the function value, right? And if this has been given already. But mostly, uh, this is a pen and paper we are doing. That's why he has just showed sine of two minus x. It will just do it, and we want to get the models and all. Uh, so you, at that time, we don't have to worry about this, this stuff. So only you'll be having the data set. You just have to work on the data set to clean it to have the data in such a way that you'll be able to. Uh, and and from those data set, you should be very much aware. So awareness is very needed in this. So you should be aware to which sort of And the first thing is, uh, if this, if you are having the label, only the label in the form of classification or regression. First thing is that you need to categorize that. Whether you will be using some regression uh, learning, uh, regression algorithm or the classification. So that with the time you will be able to know. And from this, if you are able, if you are using the classification also, if you are you, you are fixed. Okay, you you have to use the classification model. Now from the data set, you should be very aware, or from the data analysis also, you will be able to know which which. The model, which model will work? Like which algorithm will work in, in, for this data set nicely? Uh, so that also, with the time, you'll be able to know. Like for example, if you are using the three or four data, three or four algorithm you are using, okay, and from those three and four algorithm, you are able to calculate the algorithm. You can plot some some accuracy versus the whatever the data you are having. Plot and from those, you will be able to know. Okay, for this this data set, I'm the random forest or the decision tree is working. Better for me, so I'll be using this entry from upcoming all the data sets. So this all depends on the uh, the what you can say the experience or the uh, if you are going. So the experience only uh, you'll be able to know regarding how, which model to use, which algorithm to use every time. Like not every time, every, each and every if you are having some different data, we'll be using some different algorithm. So for those data, so some different algorithm will work. Anything else from here? Hey, if you're having any doubt in the problem, also you can ask. If, if somebody has started solving the problem, also you can ask me. Uh, sir, I have a question. Actually, it's mm -hmm. not with any problem with respect to the general definition of a machine learning itself. So, in the beginning of the course, it is mentioned that ML is a study of computer algorithms that improve automatically. Maybe can you just help me understand when we say automatically? Do really when we say machine learning, do we really mean to say the machines have the capability of self-learning here through this programming? Are we trying to you know give that kind of a uh, you know advantage to machines? Is that what we are trying to do here? So, see, Because why, why I'm asking this question is that as I understand, whenever we build a model, we take some historical data 
and we try to train on the data and we expect to predict the using the future data whatever the historical patterns it learned during the training and whenever the pattern changes again we add to we tend to add more data and retrain the model i'm just trying to understand you know how can we say that improve automatically maybe if you can you know help me to share your views on that it'd be helpful yeah so for example you are having so automatically mean whatever you have said later part it is the automatic thing only like you, you have earlier you were having some uh, 100 data okay and on the, mm-hmm. the basis of the 100 data uh, the machine ml like algorithm has made some model one first model m1 okay and again you have added some 50 more data set okay so mm-hmm. whenever you'll add uh, like now the data, now you, you are training the model on the 150 uh, data set so that the, 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 mm-hmm. the, the model will update it at, automatically like whatever the data you are gi- giving 150 training so but sir that, that we can do this we can do in a traditional modeling also na for example in python we have a glm function or lm function that this thing we can also do there but what is that new added thing in machine learning which is not available in the glm or lm thing actually Okay, so see in the basic uh, programming or the basic uh, aspect whatever you are, you are doing you mm-hmm. can do that it's not that you can't do like if, like for example face detection mm-hmm. thing is there face detection it's very difficult to code that like it's, it's doable but it's very difficult to do that uh, will you okay. agree, like you are agree right so it's very difficult yes sir that. i agree i agree yeah for each and every pixel you have to give some gray value whatever uh, is there like generally it depends on the value also for each and every pixel like for example if you are having some 18 cross 18 or some 15 generally it is like mm-hmm. uh, some uh, pixel value for each pixel you have to give in the python coding you are doing for each pixel you have to give so it becomes i guess very difficult to do that in the programming way that's why i guess the ml is taking lead over the basic programming So, okay. see, uh, even the even we are uh, whatever the algorithm we are using, all the algorithm is first coded only, right? So it, it should work like this in the Python or whatever the language. Exactly, sir. Is, exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. Very true. It's, yeah. Yeah. So it's already been coded in the some language only, and that language, the the way whatever we are saying in the basic programming, that is what he is doing here. That the algorithm is doing. So this is the basic programming uh, only, but yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. That is where even I have got this question. Ideally, we are coding everything, so the hmm. program is doing the same thing. Actually, uh, my concern is that question is that you know where come the concept of self learning coming into picture? Actually, here yeah. that's where I thought, but yeah, it makes sense now. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, your voice, is, your voice is now like I'm not able to hear. Or, Hello. Uh, is it from my side or your side? now am i audible sir uh, now yeah it's uh, audible yeah uh, sir uh, what is the difference between norm and you know length of a vector i think in one of the uh, you know slide professor talked about okay, where we are using the double modular sign so what is the difference between norm and length of a vector uh, uh, norm norm and length of a vector norm right. is what i guess the length of a square is norm both of them are same or different sir Uh, length is i guess uh, length generally you do how how generally you calculate the length under root of x1 minus x1 whole square like the formula generally is like yes this. that is a formula yes yeah so the length is a formula uh, for the length uh, this is a formula i guess x minus x1 whole square plus this, this way generally we do and norm is simply the square of this so norm you can say length of a square But I also have to check that. Where is that? It, it, it has come in one of the video. Let me see. I think. Yeah. So norm is generally the square, the length square. Yeah. This is yeah. Yeah. Length. It has come in classification and things, right? Yeah. So this is the square of that length square. Yeah. 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 Anything else from anyone like the basic or uh, hello sir yeah so I'm um, uh, this is related to MLF uh, I had completed my foundation level in previous year 
but i am not uh, able to access the stats to other courses for foundation level right now that too. for the vision for stats 2 and stats 1 Okay, you have already please, completed please your foundation. Please visit uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. completed courses section and in completed courses section. Yeah, it's uh, it's showing invalid URL. Okay, you have to use your personal email ID, not you know this one, not IATM official ID. That earlier courses you can access only through your personal email ID. That Gmail ID. Personal. Yeah, Gmail okay, ID, okay. which which we had given during qualifier. I am sure in okay, okay. you have given on Gmail ID, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to use that. <clears throat> okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Anyone is having any question? Any anybody has tried the the problems are very simple. So that so MLS is whole like the course is not that difficult. The whole the problems whatever you will get in the quizzes and all. So those will be like so totally mathematics course. Like we can, if we try to make it difficult, it will become very difficult course. But generally, we generally put it as a very simple like so, because uh, most of the time we have to use the uh, code and also why to like why will we give a pen and paper very complex problem and all. So mostly the papers and quizzes and all everything will be very smooth in this course. But only the some weeks you'll find it very difficult uh, to grasp the concepts, but. Yeah, it's a part and parcel. Otherwise, the course won't be that difficult. Until now, we are done with activity questions. I think in next session we will be in a position to ask practice assignment and graded assignment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the practice is very simple. You, you can just go to that. Even the graded and the the activity is pretty simple. No activity, we are done. I am done activity. So hmm. activity questions are okay. Practice and graded are. Okay. Sir, how many classes will happen per week, sir? Like sessions? So mostly two, like minimum two, and it will uh, like if somebody has a problem in any of the week, it will add up one more. Like like generally the people start having problem from week five or four. So on those weeks we generally have three uh, lectures sessions. But in most of the like most of the weeks the uh, concepts are not that difficult, so we'll be having only two lectures. Okay. Yeah, but if you find any issue, you can just uh, uh, mail or forum the, uh, that what is that discourse discourse forum is there. You can just so we'll start replying on that. I have not uh, like there were some uh, problems I've seen there. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry in case we are having doubts is there i mean is there a, a direct way to contact instead of just mailing each and every time and is there a way to clarify our doubts easily maybe within a day or like that i mean you can mail me and can, or like clarify. so we generally are in the this term we are having two people like me you can mail me or ram uh, so i'll just give you the mail id so you can just mail us we'll be trying to reply there A forum is also fine. You can tag me there at the rate Vishal or at the rate Ram. Forum, we are not able to log in. Like it is telling you are not authorized. You are not given permission to oh. join the forum. It's like that. It's coming. We are not able to join the forum as of now. Actually. Oh. Okay. It's telling we have not given access to forums as of now. So. So that. Uh, okay. Okay. So one thing, the first thing you can do is. You can just mail it to the team regarding this. See why you are not able to join the discourse forum because that generally helps you. Uh, last like the discourse forum will give you four to five marks extra. Like last time it was there, the bonus marks were there for the person who were basic active on the discourse. Like we'll be having some reflection quiz also on the basis of the discourse forum. Uh, like that will be not much. Like five to six marks will be there for those two. But that five to six marks. Will help you in like last two months. Many other person who was having 85, 86 marks, so he he just got five to six marks as a very bonus. If you are very active, not very active, also just you you are just seeing some of the questions from the discourse. Uh, so one thing you can do, you can just mail the team regarding why you are not able to uh, connect to the discourse forum. Okay, and the second thing, if you have to contact, if you have to directly mail us, you can mail us. I'll just 
uh, write my mail id on the chat box itself uh, everyone can copy that if you want to mail you can mail me directly or you want the other people to also to see the question whatever you are putting you can just put it on the uh, discord forum and tag me there at the rate vishal if you see uh, i'll be there sir actually we are getting a, a statement like sorry access to this forum is by invite only so uh, will we be getting any separate invite to join the forum every time or no uh, i think the same can i i mean just a uh, i mean error message is coming like sorry access to this forum is by invite only so uh, did you Because... join it earlier or you didn't join it from the start of this call no i joined from uh, i mean you are telling the session sir yeah yeah not session uh, the uh, discourse forum no course i am trying from day 1 uh, it's okay. showing same i thought maybe after the live sessions i will be given access i thought that way and i did not send any mail also so i thought i'll get it clarified during live sessions because okay. see otherwise uh, my, uh, my mail id login is all working i'm able to see the calendar entries all that it's all working but only this forum is like it's telling a separate message like access to this forum is by invite only so maybe i thought for every live sessions they'll be giving us invite or something like that i mean no so for the, the live session you'll be getting in the calendar itself for the forum uh, you just mail it to the support they'll they'll send you some link or something they'll help you for sure so you'll be getting Actually, the help many of there. us are not uh, able to join the forum so all need to send mail separately and get it clarified right sir so, uh okay so the data that i was going through the forum many of the people has not joined yet like i guess 600 to 700 people have not joined this is what we were talking day before yesterday so so i don't know what the steps they'll be taking but if you want to join it like you can just mail it to the team they'll help you for sure sure that's the one sure so then i'll send a mail sir yeah thank yeah. you thank you so much okay oh, thank you thank you and uh, yeah mail id i'm, I'm just putting in the chat box okay okay sir yeah. thank you okay yeah. sir thanks this is simple only vital at the rate online degree you can just uh i just put it here yeah i sir, just sir also it. the yeah the timing of the classes uh, can it be kept post 6 pm okay so uh, for saturday i can't do much that's so fine Wednesday, i'll do so for yeah, Wednesday, the week days hmm. okay i'll just try to do it from 6 to 8 or 8 but, to 10 but it's sir like but sir we have another day. sessions of mlt on saturday oh mlt you are having yes sir Sir, we also have a PDSA from six uh, to eight today. Yes, sir. Six to eight BDM, and sir, on tenth Saturday we have two to four MLF and six to eight MLT. Yes, sir. MLT is six to eight, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll just look this four to six. Uh, okay i'll just talk to the team regarding this i already talked to them to put it in the like in the evening but they already told me like all the space are occupied so i'll just go for that maybe the tuesday or tuesday will work tuesday oh, sorry thursday yes sir So I'll just look. Uh, so maybe some other day also. Maybe the evening slot you want, right? Evening slot. Yeah, that would be appreciated because working colleagues will be there, right? So um, it will be difficult to manage two p.m. I'll I'll just look at one day. Or should we shift that to the Sunday? No, Sunday. Yes, so, that one. No, no. Sunday is not like because Saturday is the deadline, right? Before Saturday itself, you'll be having it. Saturday is the deadline for your graded assignment, so we can't put it after Saturday. 
sir it's sunday right deadline is what sunday it's sunday sir <clears throat> Sunday. Yeah, sir. For the diploma courses, usually it's Sunday. Okay. So, sir, uh, other than uh, Wednesday, any other day in the evening? Okay, I'll just talk when on the Wednesday or maybe the Thursday evening slot. If if this will be vacant, I'll just book it. Otherwise, uh, uh, it's very difficult for me because what happened? Uh, so everyone already booked the slots in the evening, so I didn't got the slot for the MLS in the evening. So Thursday also you already have. Okay, I'll just look. So the team will say which one vacant the slot is vacant. Then. But sir, whether 18th October is the last date for week one and week two both. 18th October. 18th October. I guess so. The 18th or 16th? I 18th. 18th. I guess. Yeah, 18th. Yeah, correct. 18th is the last. Date. For both week, huh? Week one and week two. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, both the week, correct, both the week. So, yeah, so if you're having doubt, you can ask like anything from the week one. This is not difficult, but yeah. So. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I've joined a little bit late. I have a doubt. What is the house name we have to provide, sir? What, what name? House name we have to provide. Oh, house name. Uh, can somebody help him? Uh, house name regarding what? Uh, regarding your. Uh... Like the forum logging page, they are, it's asking about the house name. So... so. Okay. Can somebody help him? Like, what is that house name? I am not aware of that. Like... I think uh, house name is the students uh, in the student life. We have uh, 12 houses. You must belong to one of the houses. Okay, we haven't got any details about that. That's why I am. So earlier you would be having like, earlier you were in stat 2. In that, those courses, you would have been in some houses, right? No, sir. Actually, uh, this is the first class we have joined this previous I mean, we haven't got any link about the previous class. So this is the first class I'm joining. So, uh, I mean, I okay, you do. doubts on all these things. That's okay, for the discussion forum or for the discourse forum, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So why do you just, you, you uh, the same thing you can mail it to me. I'll just forward this to the team. Maybe they'll help you. Or maybe I'll you just ping me on the mail. I'll just ask the team regarding this and forward it to you. Maybe that will help you to join the discourse for us. Okay. So I'm also not aware regarding this house number and all, but I am aware that there is something house name and all, but uh, exactly I'm not aware of. So maybe the team course team will help you in a better way. Anything else? Any doubt? Any problem? Anyone who has tried the practice of graded assignments? Any problem in those things? Uh, sir, I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Uh, yeah, uh, I actually wanted to ask uh, that uh, I have taken uh, MLS and MLT together this term. So, how? Okay. What should be my strategy for studying them both as their core requisites? Oh. So the MLS won't be having any problem, I guess. MLS, like many of the things will be taught in the MLT also. 
okay like for example here we have been talking about the supervised and unsupervised all the stuff so in ml technique uh, ml technique what was the first week pca what was the first week content did you went through that yes so we have in the first week what, what presentation learning and pca is there PCA, presentation yeah. learning and pca yeah pca is there okay so that will make your path here also smoother like see if you are reading the pca there in the first week itself the pca will come again in mls but all the math part will be there i don't know about the ml techniques what has been taught i am not in the content uh, like i'm very honest with that I, i have to see that because maybe next time we'll be moving to that so i have to see the content but uh, pc will be reading here in fourth or fifth week svd also will be reading fourth or fifth six week and uh, so ml is not that difficult it's like all the basic math uh, regarding the pca svd basic lean algebra you'll be reading basic gradient descent optimization problem those things optimization problem i think will be reading in the ml techniques also uh, some and then you'll be basic probability that we already have read in stats too so this this is the whole thing the syllabus has told you like svd pca basic linear algebra optimization and basic probability so this is the four five concept we'll be reading here and those you'll be utilizing in the ml technique so ml technique i think so uh, the algorithm you'll be reading most of the algorithm most of, most of the supervised and unsupervised uh, algorithm will be there basic math behind all those algorithm will be there so i don't think so there will be any problem and you don't have to like uh, get tense also with both the courses MLT, I guess Professor Raj uh, Raj Kumar sir is taking that. He's very awesome. Like you'll not feel any problem in going through the lectures and the course instructor are also very like good. So and MLF is already like three four courses has been done. So I don't think so there will be any issue in uh, MLF and MLT if you are taking together also. But if you would have taken MLP, then then I would not have suggested you because that that is a very hectic one. So this this but this two courses you can take and manage also. This 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 will not uh, give you any pain uh, in the whole courses. Okay, so that's the basic. What I've been taught here, just do and the contents, uh, problems and all is very simple in ML. Uh, MLT also the professor is very awesome. So I don't think so there will be much issues regarding the both if, if somebody is taking both the courses. And if you are having any doubt, you can just ask me. Also, there are so many people in ML techniques. Also, I know, like, so you can ask them. Also, you not have any problem regarding that. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, in this term, we are not going to have solve with us session like what we used to have in other courses. Yeah, solve with us is on the Saturday. Like solve with us and open session both will be there. So, yeah. That session may get a bit longer, but yeah, we'll be having solve with us and open both. Okay. Well, Malik, I think we should have three sessions only per week. What? 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 Three sessions? Yeah, three sessions per week for Malik because this is maths and stats combination, so that will be helpful. Whenever we'll be having problem, we can have the more session also. That's not the issue. But see. Whenever if you will go to the degree level, you'll be having only one session. At that time, those courses are pretty difficult, but you have to manage it. Like, like, okay. From here itself, like most of the courses will be having two two sessions each week. But for some week, you'll be having three, four also if you are having more so much difficulty. Anything else from your side? And like the one thing is the timing. I'll just talk from the discourse the discourse forum. Many of you have not joined. That also I'll, I'll just let them know. Uh, many of the problem students is having problem. You can also mail them. Um, anything else? Sir, numericals are a little calcul. Uh... Calculation intensive. Yeah, that is what I find. Yeah, because this is all the math, most math 
Thank no, what you, I was sir. asking that uh, even in quizzes, it will be kind of uh, such no, time-consuming no, calculation. Be, no, no, it will not be that calculated uh, in the quizzes that I, I am making use to. So the quiz paper is already been prepared and all. I have seen the paper, so those those are not the calculation is not much intensive that you are facing in a graded or practice. Why? Because some of the calculations are like. Six. Um, if one yeah, doesn't yeah. Uh, do approximation, there are six digits after decimal or eight digits yeah, after yeah, decimal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. So you'll be having the in the problem, the graded or practice, you'll be having some problem like this, but in not in the quiz. That that uh, that is pure. I've seen the problems and also those are not that. Those will be conceptual more, mostly, not the the calculation won't be that difficult. You can have one or two problem, but not uh, more than one and two. Out of like fifteen or ten, fifteen, uh, sixteen question, we'll be having one or two calculated. Other than that, all the problems will be simple. You can see the last like uh, term questions also. Those were not that difficult and not that calculatable. You can get an idea from those. Okay. Yeah, and and on the discourse, you can have. There are many materials regarding the MLA also. You can just refer those materials also. So, like for example, one person has created one stuff. You can just go through that. So, MLF resource is there. So you can go through this. There are so many uh, notes has been created by last term students and all. You can just go through that also. Okay. So those are all on the discourse. You can get the help from there. For all the topics, you'll be having so many books also there. If somebody has any any problem, in, if you want to read. Like for example, the density estimation, you can have the, you can just go through those blocks and all. So this has been there in the discourse. So if if uh, we watch lectures, uh, videos uh, thoroughly and uh, attend live sessions and uh, ask uh, our doubts over there, will there be any need to go through any of the prescribed textbooks? No, that not be sufficient? No, 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 that is sufficient. Like you are just. But for your like, if you want to get a more clarity or want to read more blogs, see ML and DL is like nobody knows like perfectly that there is a like because every day some more algorithm is coming. Okay, every day some more algorithm will get updated on the side. So nobody has a fair idea. Like here we are not reading much of the algorithm, but see PC and SBD what I was talking about is a very old model. Like it's a model that has been used in 2010 and five. Like Now we are using so many other like dimensional reduction techniques. This this techniques are no no longer like we are using, but uh, we are reading that like uh, so it's like a what you can say every time like every six months many of the algorithm getting updated and all. So you have to read if you want to be a good like uh, in this you have to read some blogs. There are so many other sites like um, so you can just read just Google something. So googling generally helps you a lot in this ML life. At least in ML, not in other subject, but in ML, the Google will help you a lot. But for the courses and like MLS, you don't have to go through anywhere. Okay, but if you are having like coding stuff like ML techniques or ML programming, you should do that. It will be helpful for you only, but for not for ML. Okay, so understand. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Okay, so if you don't have any issue, like uh, so we can just close that. We'll meet on the Saturday, and till that time, like you can complete your all the assignments and graded assignments. Okay, sir. Yeah, so we'll meet on that Saturday. If you are having, like, you can if you have not gone through the lectures, also you can just go through that. We'll meet on that day, and we can discuss more about whatever you are having the doubts or anything regarding the doubts from today's session. Also, you can just ask on those sessions. And any other problem also, you can just share. Um, like you can ask me. I've just mailed. I sent you the mail ID also. You can just mail me. I'll try to get back to you. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah. Thank. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for joining the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.